surprised that I, I mean, there's obviously done something and, for, and to get Walmart's attention at all, I think there's, they're a large and, you know, the income base that they have, the financial assets they have to pay whatever fines they want to throw at. Uh, obviously, they did something push a button somewhere because there was a recent article um, to the beginning of this year and then the last year that Walmart, um, the corporation, had said that they were joining that website so that they could better understand the needs and, and better improve their ways. There's also um, an interesting movie about Walmart. It's called The High Cost of Low Price. I don't know if anybody has heard of it. But we all pay a high price for the low prices at Walmart in terms of paying workers such low wages and encouraging workers to go and get food stamps and get you know publicly subsidized health care. So we're all paying for that. The infrastructure that needs to be built for these large stores in terms of the roads, all of that, we're all subsidizing that as well. And then they're putting the mom and pop stores out of business. So there's a lot of ramifications about these huge corporations and their, you know, race to, you know, up their bottom line at the cost of all of us. The, uh, as you know better than the rest of us, there is, you know, particularly North Carolina, it's a negative view of unions. Is there any program or effort on, on the part of the unions to, to deal with that image and um, I know it's a tough question. It, it's tough. You know, I certainly would welcome if the National AFL would spend some money in terms of more of a kind of public relations campaign to combat those kinds of stereotypes. I mean, here on a local level, I mean, we don't have resources to, you know, have an ad campaign or anything like that. But it's why I always welcome coming to classes or any kind of opportunity where I can come speak to folks and dispel some of the stereotypes that people have about union members. Um, you know, we also try and do letters to the editor, or op-eds, um, radio interviews to try and explain what the labor movement's really all about and, and why it benefits all workers. But there's no real campaign or strategy, but it's, I mean, I grew up in North Carolina. I certainly know what folks think about unions here. If someone could design a public relations campaign of nothing else but to give the facts, to, to not maybe lean one way or the other one, but to get people to come on to understand what is going on. If someone could come up with a low cost or, you know, relatively no cost campaign on that, who would they go to if they were interested in spreading the word about unions in general, what they can do? Who would they go to? So they weren't, since so they weren't a union member. Who would they go to? How would they contact you and be like, hey, I want to help you. I have this idea to spread at least the basic information about what unions are. Because a lot of that with bunch of people, it's not that, not even just the negative things they hear, it's just the fact that they like their old ways and they don't like new things, so they don't even try to see the good things. So you have to kind of put it out there to where they can actually see it and know it. Right. I mean, we're kind of the hub for unions in North Carolina, so I mean people, like I said, they contact us often if they have issues on the job and they want to talk to a union organizer. You just contact your local office. Yeah, I mean, and if there was a specific union that, you know, folks were interested in, in working with or, or getting information out about, I can direct people to the proper union. <laughs> 